When I started learning about mobile security, I learned that mobile devices are consisting of two main modules. One is the so-called application processor and on the other side there was a thing called the baseband processor. I didn't know that these two were actually separated from each other. Although this part of your application processor is very secure, this is not the same for the side on the basement. In today's new session, we are going to deep dive into a very interesting topic, which I really would like to showcase to you guys. Make sure that you wait till the end of this video, because I'm going to give you an environment with a virtual machine through our platform that you can actually follow along with these whole stuff that I'm going to showcase you. So before we go further, what is a basement in the first place? A basement processor is handling all the telecommunication of your phone and allows you to receive phone calls, send SMSs, but also your internet traffic is flowing through this. In this case, all the radio signaling and all that kind of stuff is being handled by the basement processor. And this is one of the coolest targets because most of the traffic is flowing through that part. If we as an attacker can get access to that part, meaning we should be able to intercept communication, SMSs and bypass two-factor authentications and also some other type of attacks that are possible. So before we go further, I would like to explain to you the difference between the application processor and the baseband processor. The application processor runs the operating system like iOS or Android and most of the time, as we know, this is quite secure. Now, on the other side, we have a separate system for the basement. And if you followed our articles on the blog post, you will see that we actually got the modem.bin, the code that is actually flashed on the chip, is being available for us to do investigation on. So all these security features that we have on the application's processor side are not available on the basement uh, side. Now you might think, doesn't that sound weird? Yes, the first time when I heard this, it sounded very weird to me as well. I couldn't believe it. I almost thought like this is not possible. Then while investigating, it was actually quite true. All those ASLR, data execution prevention like NX, non-writable pages and that kind of stuff is not available on the basement. And this makes exploiting the baseband vulnerabilities super easy like it's 1990. If you followed our previous blog post, you will also find out that we wrote an article where we dissect the firmware of a Samsung device. Now you can do this pretty much with every other phone and what you can do there is pull out the modem.bin. If you do not know how to do this, go back to our website in the blog sections, you will find how to do this. Now this is a subsequent of that blog article. In this case, we are going to find functions within that firmware, the basement firmware, and we are going to build a fuzzer. In most of the cases, security researchers are using fuzzing techniques and static analysis or doing reverse engineering of the basement code and find vulnerabilities. In our case, we are going to showcase you how you can utilize fuzzing and specifically emulated fuzzing to find vulnerabilities. We are going to discover already found bugs so that you can learn how to do this yourself. So buckle up uh, tech enthusiasts, we are going to do this all together and let's dive into the secrets of emulated baseband fuzzing and discover the vulnerabilities that were found. So thank you very much and let's not lose too much time and go try it out ourselves. So now that you are here, let's dive in to do this together. First of all, I want to highlight that we create the previous article on our blog post that contains how you can actually get your hands into the device ROM and how you can extract the modem.bin from there. And I would highly recommend you to go and read this as well so that you understand how you can get your hands on these modem.bin. Uh, but in this case, we are going to focus as a subsequent of that article. I'm going to showcase you how to do this yourself. And we're going to specifically focus on fuzzing the Shannon baseband. And after that, we're going to use the modem.bin that we extracted previously in the previous article and do a fuzzing against that as well and find vulnerabilities in the baseband uh, firmware. Now, before we continue, I want to highlight that we create a special VM for you and you can go and enroll for that yourself. There's a link in the description below as well. So you press on enroll and it is totally for free. You can enroll for that and that should bring you to the next page. In the next page, we explain how you can deploy the cloud VM by using free Azure account 
or if you already have an account to use that one. To be able to deploy the machine that we created for you, you can click the deploy to Azure and that should deploy this virtual machine directly into your own tenant. Make sure that you have a tenant and that can deploy. This is full private for you. So if you want to use this for private usage, that's also possible. We cannot get access to this device. It's in your own environment. So you can just click on this and that should start deploying the device. Now we can go and scroll down over here and see the things that we need to do. And one of them is the resource group that we need to fill in and the location. And then in the end, there's this admin password that we need to set. So let's do this. Now, first of all, what I will do, I will set the resource group over here. I'll create a new resource group called Baseband Fuzzing Video. And then you can press OK and then change the location to somewhere that's close nearby to you. That makes it much easier and faster to use this device. And remember the admin username, which is MHL user, and then change the password to something that you can remember and use this. Now you can press preview, uh, review and create that will check everything. And then you can press create that should create the virtual machine in your environment. Now this deployment might take a couple of minutes to run. So we'll let this run in the meantime. I want to explain a little bit about the tools that we are going to use. One of them is the firmware. Firmware is a tool that has been developed by Grant Hernandez. Grant Hernandez created the tool Firmware based on the research that they did. You can read the research paper over here. And they also presented this at Black Hat. And I highly recommend to watch that and read their article as well. Uh, firmware is a full system basement firmware emulation platform for fuzzing. And without this tool, uh, things would have been much complicated for us to do this. So shout out to Grant Hernandez that he published this tool so that we can actually use it. Now let's use firmware and see if we can find vulnerabilities ourselves. So I'll go back and see our deployment is complete. So I'll press to go to the resource group and then you can see here this the device running press on that one and you'll see it's already started and you should see a public IP address there strangely enough I don't see a public uh, IP address now we see it so I can copy that over there and then we should go back and open a new terminal and within that terminal I'll make this a little bit larger well we can connect to this device by SSH into it MHL user at the IP address and say yes to connect and give the password that you set in the beginning and this should give you directly access to this device. Now that we have access to this device, uh, you need to go to the slash opt folder and within the opt folder, we already installed a bunch of tools for you and you need to go specifically to the baseband fuzzing folder. Once you go in there, there are several folders, channel and baseband, firmware and Ghidra. You can go to the firmware folder and you should see quite a lot of stuff. So for now, that's okay. Um, what we will do right now is use the article, the blog post that we created and follow along with the steps that are over here. So this part is not needed as it says it's not needed for the cloud VM. But if you want to do this locally, you should be able to use these commands and set it up locally on your local machine. So for now, we need to go as sudo su and set the core patterns so that we can see the crash dumps. And that's needed for our fuzzer. So we'll set that and then exit. But I'm not going to exit that one and leave that running. Once that's done, this part is again not needed. You can do this if you do this locally. And this command is needed to run the Docker container for firmware. So we're going to do this and run that. Once firmware is running or the container will drop into the container's uh, shell. And that happened. Now, again, this is not needed for the cloud VM. You should, it's not needed uh, to do this. So we'll skip that part, but the only thing that is needed, if you do this yourself, you would need to download the firmware yourself. And again, that's for us not needed. We already put it there for you. So what we can do is type in ls, uh, for example, ls minus al, let's do this. 
we should be able to see the file over here here we can see that file and we also added the modem.bin over here these files take uh, quite a lot of time to download so we put them already on this device for you so you don't have to have that struggle so copy this command over here the only thing this is going to do is try to emulate the firmware uh, and hopefully with that we should be able to emulate it and get the addresses that we need in order to take a snapshot so we'll let this run now again uh, some of you might not know what snapshotting is what we do during snapshotting is we save the state of the memory of a running application in order to have the memory laid out specifically for targeting certain functions and that require a certain uh, memory layout to be uh, set beforehand and then once that is set and we take a snapshot picture of that memory state we can save that and we can restore that all the time and call the same function over and over again without uh, causing any issues now in this case we are going to do the same thing so we need to emulate this first and this might take a couple of minutes to finalize so i highly recommend you to wait until this finishes in the meantime we will open the article also to see what's going on uh, so in the article we are discussing so you will see a bunch of stuff uh, flashing by in a couple of minutes and the only thing that we are interested in is in this line you can see that over here it says like btl pal sm set event and the reason why we are focusing on that one i'm going to explain that in more detail because we are going to target the function pal ascent message to but the problem is that if we set the address of snapshotting directly when this function is getting called in some cases the memory is not laid out uh, properly so we are going to set take a snapshot at this moment uh, when pal sms event has been called and that's the moment that we will take the snapshot now we'll wait for this to be finished so it's running right now at this moment we should be able to search for pal sm set event as you can see we have here the line that we are looking for and i'll copy this address you can press ctrl c after this it doesn't matter anymore and let me explain to you before we continue a little bit further because the only thing that's left right now for us is to build a fuzzing harness now, as i said we are fuzzing uh, the pal message sent and just a little bit about this uh, fuzzing harness this is an example harness that comes with firmware and you can use this already to discover bugs that have maybe not found previously because you can run this to to another uh, baseband for example from another vendor and it should still be able to work now in the first single setup in this function what the fuzzer will do is set up certain variables that are needed multiple times and after that the fuzz single will do the multiple fuzzing now as we can go over this is first of all the pal message sent requires quite some input the item and the queue uh, so we need to construct that and we are going to specifically uh, fuzz this one what this harness is doing actually is setting up the item as you can see here with all the fields that are necessary uh, but the most important thing is the buffer is be, uh, that we our mutated buffer is being copied into the payload of the item and then the item is being executed so we are essentially fuzzing palm message sent to using an item where the payload is getting mutated by our fuzz now before we can continue as i said we took that address previously and the reason for that this address is that we want to take a snapshot when that function gets executed so we'll take this and this address uh, this uh, firmware snapshot at and with this we should be able to take a snapshot so i'll paste this in and as you can see the address is already the same so you should be able to leave that and press enter and this might take a couple of minutes to execute just let it run once this has been run we should be able to see that snapshot completed on the screen we can see this also in our article that once this is completed you'll see snapshot completed also while running this you might see in the end 
that it crashes and that is what we will see in a couple of minutes we will see a segmentation fault don't worry about that nothing is wrong it took the snapshot and it will still save it on the machine and after that we should be able to run our fuzz so let's wait until this gets executed now we can see that it gets executed again this might take a, a little bit of time to finalize so let's wait until that happens and below we can see that snapshot in Camu state and this is exactly what we need so it's gonna save the whole Camu state and it can be recovered at a later moment this might take again a couple of minutes so wait until this is done running again and we can see that the core dump happened because it crashed and that's okay as i said that's perfectly fine now the snapshot has been taken and the only thing that's left is that we need to provide some meaningful input as initial seed to our fuzzer so that it can effectively find better code coverage. So what we can do for that is create some input. As you can see over here, we are doing this with Python and then decoding that into the Latin one encoding and then spit this out into the folder input. So let's check this out. First of all, we have a folder called fuzz input. And what I will do is I will paste this in. We need to change this a little bit over here. It needs to be slash and then dot slash. And this will write that in there. So if we do ls uh, fuzz input, we should see our input file over there. Yeah, perfect. So now that we have everything ready. We should now be able to run our fuzzer. If you want to know more about all these values that you see over here, I refer you to this article that we created and it's linked in the description below. So you should be able to find all these things that I'm showing in the description of this video. The, we can now run the fuzzer and I'll explain you a little bit what these uh, switches are doing. Let's do a clear so that you can see it more clearly. And I'll execute the command. This says like AFL for uh, no fork. So there's no forking server being started and for the rest we provide our input folder and an output folder the input folder contains all the initial seeds that we want to feed to our fuzzer and then the output folder will contain all the crash files that made this application crash then there's memory and there's some more stuff but in this case we are interested about this part so we are running firmwire and then dash dash restore snapshot because we saved it into uh, fuzz based gsm make sure that this fuzzer is fuzzing this firmware over there with the taken snapshot that we took previously so press enter now and if everything is correct our fuzzer should be starting in a couple of seconds okay now as you can see it is running it is extremely slow so i highly recommend to use a very fast device to do this kind of stuff if you just let this run for a couple of days you'll definitely find the crashes that happen if you do not want to wait so long i highly recommend you increase the course within this machine that you have and then it will find it um, i think around the half day it should be able to find it uh, so what i would like you to do is now use the modem.bin that we had previously extracted using the previous article and try this out yourself now the cool part is we have already you can see that we in the end produced the crashes now in here this section that we have over here is explaining about using the modem.bin and again you don't have to worry about the modem.bin we already transferred that for you on this device so don't worry it's already there the modem.bin is here and this is the one that comes from the same device that had also the MMS vulnerability that we were going to look at. Uh, in the next video, hopefully we are going to do the fuzzing against Lipskia and rediscover the vulnerabilities that Project Zero was, has discovered. Please don't forget to hit that like button already and leave a comment uh, what you think about this video. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and hit the bell button because we are going to release quite a lot of new videos and make sure that you are part of that.